What's the value of a redshirt year at a place like receiver? Seems like y'all had a lot, even Mike Thomas, you know, mm -hmm. after he had played a year, just what do they get out of that, especially at wide receiver? I mean, it's not not something you're looking to do. I mean, we don't really want to redshirt anybody, but sometimes just the situation presents itself like a Jalen Marshall, who was a quarterback and really had no idea how to play receiver. And so he needed a year to learn how to play the position, you know? So. It's not something you you don't recruit somebody saying we're going to yeah. redshirt this kid, but there's times where it's just part of the maturation process of playing the position and playing it at this level. And then how do you get them through that? Because obviously they're all you know highly touted people, and then they go from that to, to sitting out a year. Yeah, I mean it's the same way you deal with anything. Just uh, blunt honesty that ultimately is not usually what they want to hear, but it's what's mm -hmm. necessary. And, and if it is honesty and it's it's truthful. There's not usually many issues. I mean, there's the internal struggle they have with going from a big time, all everything, inflated player with uh, coming out of high school to kind of that reality that here's where you really are. Now let's now let's put a plan together to get you here. Exactly. Um, a lot of injury updates for me, if you don't mind. Um, mm -hmm. A, what's going on with Johnny Dixon? Why is he? Uh, I don't. Did he? And then also <coughs> Dontre Wilson. Did he have a third procedure on his foot? Um, like what's going on with those two guys and, and what's keeping them from the field? Yeah, no, Dontre, uh, Dontre just, his foot's kind of been bothering me. We've just been a little cautious, just don't want to re-injure it. Nothing, nothing new really, just kind of, uh, we're just being tentative because we want it to be, once it's healed, we want it healed forever. And we don't want to re-injure it, you know, with it not being fully healed or, or not being f at full strength. And, and so, has he had a hard time with that? Because it happened a year ago now, we're, we're um, last November. Yeah, I mean, he's, he wants to play. We want him to play, but we also want him to be able to play every week and not not have another a re-injury. So it's just being cautious. I mean, we're hoping this week it can be the week that he goes, and we'll find out Tuesday if he can. And then um, Johnny. Johnny, kind of a similar deal. He had uh, had a a knee. What well, I don't even know what it was. It was basically just uh, arthritis or not arthritis. He had stuff in there. I'm not a doctor, but yeah. and he had that procedure a while back to get it cleaned out. And the same same thing. Just want to make sure it doesn't come back. We don't want scar tissue or inflammation to come back. So we're just being cautious with it. What has this year been like for you? I mean, you lose Noah Brown mm -hmm. for the season starts. You lose Corey Smith. These other depth yeah. guys, Paris Campbell. Mm -hmm. What's the challenge been like for you? How hard has it been for you? I mean, it's been. Uh, I guess it's it's. It's been devastating, but at the same time, it, we're in a position in my room that and we've lost five of our top nine wideouts. And most schools, I'd say probably every school in the country, that would be, I mean, disabling. And for us, I mean, we, we have such depth and I, so much confidence in the guys that are healthy right now that we haven't really missed a beat. And so uh, it's been devastating. I want those kids out there. Obviously, we could use them, but, but we'll be all right. How confident are you Braxton will be available this week? Um, I, I think. There's no doubt he will. I guess we'll see what happens with practice tomorrow. But I know he felt good yesterday, a little sore, but he should be, should be good to go. Zach, exactly. when we came in here the day that Noah Brown was injured, it, a lot of people, I mean, it felt in here like you could, the whole air got let out of this place. A, can you <coughs> take me back a little bit to just mm -hmm. what it was like when that happened? And B, apparently he was making crazy plays in practice and it seemed like he was going to be one of your biggest offensive weapons. Can you just speak to the, the loss that that was for you guys? Yeah, I mean, it, it, Noah's injury was, I mean, obviously, one, it was a devastating injury, period, no matter who has it done. But then, specifically, the transformation he made and the work he put in to have the camp he was having, I mean, he was probably going to be one of our top two or three wideouts. Um, I, did, I was so excited to watch him play a game. And uh, for it to happen right at the end of camp was, was tough for him, for us. Um, but mainly because the kid had worked so hard and, and, and he was reaping the rewards of the work. And for him not to be able to get at least one opportunity to play and kind of reap the rewards publicly, just you, you felt for him. He was going to be a crazy matchup nightmare, right? Because he could block yes. on the end. Is that what was making him was so special? I mean, that's the idea, right? <laughs> when we recruited him, that's what we wanted him to be. And then he was finally turning into that. So we were. We were really excited to watch that flourish. You knew you were going to lose. Go ahead. You Go knew ahead. you were going to lose Evan and, and Devin, mm -hmm. um, and then obviously you had the injuries. But even in light of that, are you pleased, satisfied, whatever adjective you want to pick, with the progress of your guys? Very, very pleased with where, how they're playing the game. I mean, guys like Mike Thomas are just doing everything I'm asking them to do, and and, and then some. And I mean, he's.
preparation and maturity today from where it was even a year ago or two years ago is I mean it's night and day the transformation he's made and uh, it's very exciting to walk into my room every day and go to work. Zach Terry McLaurin's playing a lot on special teams. Is mm -hmm. he close to getting on the field more he's wide close. receiver? He's yeah. close. He um, he's right on that cusp. He, he's he's making strides. He's obviously helping our team a ton. He's extremely valuable, and then he's just he's he's a step or two away from from being a major contributor or receiver, which is going to happen soon. Exactly. Well, Jeff Green's been a guy that Urban Meyer's been talking about mm -hmm. lately. What's been the difference with Jeff Green this year? I think he just has really taken a more serious approach. He's um, he's really committed to doing the little things we ask him to do so that he can get on the field. And so because he's done that, he, you've seen him out there. Zach, you mentioned that you lost five of your top nine and that you guys were you know, moving on without a beat. Mm -hmm. Looking into the future a little bit, does your depth chart at the wide receiver position, especially if there's going to be potential losses at the end of the year for guys who go to the league, mm -hmm. do you feel like the way you guys have recruited, not maybe just only the wide receiver position, but everywhere that this team is well equipped to handle a potential exodus of talent at the end of the year? Yeah, I mean, I can't speak on the, for the team. Obviously, I don't know the intricate uh, details and uh, projections at every position, but my position, I feel great. I mean, with the guys we're recruiting right now, the guys we have recruited, the guys who are getting developed, I mean, I, I don't see I don't see us taking a step backwards in the near future. I'm, I'm real excited to watch some of these young guys get their opportunity in the future because they're they're showing a lot of promise. And then the guys, obviously, that are injured when they come back, I already know what they can do. So I'm excited for that, too. So I don't, I don't, I feel great about it. I feel great about where we are, where we're going, even if guys leave. And, I, you know, I'm, I'll be excited for them. Over, overall, your team has been healthy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Except your position, really. Um, do you ever like look in the mirror or say to the, you know, why, why me? Kind of. <laughs> yeah, probably about the time Corey broke his leg, it was like, man, oh man, we're not living the right or something. <laughs> Something's going on. It, it, uh, but you know what? There, there's a reason for everything, and I mean, it, it's fortunately we we have a situation where we can, uh, I guess, absorb that impact. I'm assuming is that... Urban's not somebody who says, "Well, I know you guys have a lot of injuries. You know, I can understand <laughs> if your production's down." There's, there's a standard of performance that is <laughs> that is expected and demanded, and that's really set in the room. Not to mention amongst the program, but um, it doesn't matter who's doesn't matter the situation. There's a performance that we have to hit, and we will hit it. And how's his evaluation been of you, kind of? Um, all, all positive. I mean, you know, just like anything else, we're we're a work in progress, but we performed well. Forgive me if you've been asked this, but what has it been like to coach Braxton through his transition? It's been really, um, it's been a, a really rewarding process, both for him and, and, and me and the team, just to see a kid who went through what he went through, being who he was, the, the focal point, the star, and then obviously the devastating injury and re-injury, and then being able to help him get to a place where he could make an impact again and just seeing the relief and satisfaction he had with being back on the field is, is one of the more rewarding things I've seen. When he broke down after Virginia Tech and, 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 and I gave him a hug, it was probably one of the top two or three things I've ever done just because I was here late at night in the summer with him. I, I saw him, what he was working, how hard he was working, and just to see him get the reward and, and the satisfaction and relief was just really cool. Has it improved you as a coach? Because I don't want to understate Braxton's ability and or yeah. what his experience at quarterback helps him but you were building a wide receiver from the ground up yeah no it, it definitely it makes you professionally develop it makes you kind of break things down to the finest detail and, and, and because like you said I mean here he's this freakish athlete that you need to kind of transform into a receiver and, and it's not like you have a red shirt year or some time to do it it was like hey we got three months let's go <laughs> so um, it's definitely been, it was a challenge, and it was a, a challenge for both Braxton and I and, and Coach Meyer and everybody involved. And um, it was obviously introspectively, I needed to make sure that everything was in a row because there was no, no, you couldn't miss. There was no opportunity to miss. It, was, it had to be 100% guarantee, and so we, we made sure that happened. It sounds like um, from Coach Meyer that he's going to be okay, but uh, how much of a hold your breath moment is Saturday when you see that happen? I mean, any time a player's down, you hold your breath. And then obviously Braxton being as, as talented and valuable to the team as he is, not to mention a great kid, you, you, you know, that obviously only heightens your concern. But Braxton's as tough a receiver as I've ever coached. So I knew as long, if it wasn't serious, he was going to play. 
So uh, I never was concerned that it would be a ding that would hold him out. It's going to have to be something serious to keep that kid off the field. As the designated offensive coach will ask you this, how did JT handle the suspension last week in terms of work ethic, leadership, uh, just his presence? Uh, he handled it like uh, like like you would imagine anyone would that had made a mistake. I mean, he was a he was accepted responsibility and and wanted to move forward and was apologetic. I mean, just what, how you would anticipate a grown man would handle a bad decision. Zach, Von last Bell, question. Von Bell is over there saying that he is volunteering to play offense. I'm I'm that? I'm volunteering my position as receiver coach if Von Bell comes and sits in my room. Oh, just defense. dealing with him for 20 minutes a day when we go and see the defense is plenty. I'm not dealing with him for a whole day. No chance. <laughs> but he's a playmaker, Zach. Is he? Have you heard that? It'll yeah, when, when old linemen are trying to tackle him, he can really get something done. <laughs> <laughs>